Hello and welcome to The Great Cricketer on 7. You think there's no cricket happening, but my goodness me, there's so much cricket happening and has happened. We're going to talk about the ODIs. Yes, that's right. Two ODIs actually happened since we last convened. Uh, as obviously the, the test squad has announced for, been announced for the Sri Lanka series. Not to mention the BBL, but the main story is the WBBL. A couple of unbelievable finishes. Unbelievable. In the semi final That was weird. That was unrehearsed. <laughs> We're backing singers. Yeah. We're backing yeah. singers. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the second segment this week is going to be some of the blandest, most beige cricketing topics that we can think of uh, that would suck the life out of a dinner party, or before answering your questions using the hashtag AskTJC. My name is Ian Higgins, and I'm joined by Sam Perry and Dave Edwards. Boys, Happy New Year. Can you believe that we had two cracking ODI games against uh, India? They beat us again. Oh, I don't remember what happened in them. I know that Australia lost. I know that uh, we put up a little bit of a fight, but ultimately MS Dhoni decided to win it whenever he wanted to win it. Yeah. Uh, I know that caused some consternation because... Mm apparently went too slowly and put pressure on other guys but he still won it and he's like 85 years old and was far yeah. too good for Australia mm. uh, I didn't even know it was on I, I mean, was it on? Cool. No, no. It's all the big takeaway is that Seven don't have the ODIs, which is a comment that you will leave at the bottom of this yeah. video. We really because appreciate the feedback because we yeah. were involved in the rights negotiation yeah. and we just failed to get it. So yeah. apologies on behalf of the great cricketer. And well, Seven. Channel Seven brought us to the table. I thought mm. we should negotiate the rights deal so we can get us over the on the ODIs. Mm. I'm sorry we let you down there. We mm. let everyone down again. So please leave that comment at the bottom of this video without even watching any of the content. Um, nothing really good happened in the ODIs, lads, because. Um, <laughs> Because, like, I mean, Sean Marsh scored... Sean Marsh batted well. Oh, yeah. just annoying, but that's, isn't it? But that annoys the country when, when our cricketers runs. does well. We don't like it when one of our guys does well. No, Sean Marsh in particular. Oh, right. There's no one more polarising than Sean mm. Marsh. And another 100, mm. now he's mm. got to go to the World Cup. Now mm. he's got a few more years. Yeah. Like, mm. in, a, in a context where, like, the country is desperate for hundreds generally, mm. Sean Marsh hundreds are the least wanted hundreds. Mm. Yeah. Sean Marsh ODI <laughs> hundreds, yeah. they're not anything we're interested in. Mm. We want, like, only specific types of yeah. hundreds, just not Marsh ODI want... hundreds in series that we end up losing no, anyway. There is Best hundreds by 17-year-old wunderkins, mm. not, yeah. you know, 35-year-old blokes who've had many opportunities mm. and had mm. the last name Marsh. We mm. only want two things in this life, fix a great barrier reef and no more Sean Marsh hundreds. Don't do a 10 year challenge well, with Sean Marsh. We spoke mm. about Glenn Maxwell like needing to score the right kind of runs. Sean Marsh just needs to score the wrong kind of runs, I mm. think. I'm not mm. really sure what that means just there. Anyway, mm. so he scored some runs. He batted well. Jai Richardson bowling fantastically yes. as well. But apart from that, not many takeaways other than Glenn Maxwell batting seven. Mm. Um, yeah. Stoinis got a new haircut, the retro mm. kit. There were, like, nothing really good happened. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I mean, we could get this ship right back in order on this entire show and talk about, like, Australia's World Cup prospects. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, like Adam Zamper and Nathan Lyon were kind of vying off for the spin position. Right. I don't think we really solved anything there other than uh, the knowledge that we can't take a wicket between overs 10 and 40. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, Jai Richardson, I think, was the great story <laughs> to come out of the ODI series. And then he's won himself a test berth. So why don't we move into the test cricket? That's what we'll, Let's look forward. If we must. This test series against Sri Lanka, we've got a game at yep. the Gabba, a game in, in Canberra. Mm. Uh, in many ways, we could say they're all kind of dead rubbers and don't really mean much, but in many, in many other ways, have, mean we, everything. have we ever needed hundreds and wins more? Has, it, has the nation of Australia ever wanted to feel that comfort, that palpable comfort of just winning? Is it, that's no, how I feel. No, I don't think mm. that's ever happened in the history of Australian cricket. Never, mm. more, for, never more have we needed mm. this, mm -hmm. and this being just to win a test match against yeah. Sri Lanka, ranked number six in the world. Mm. We're ranked number five in the world, mm. mind you. Mm. We're not the number one team anymore, but we mm. desperately, desperately need this. There's a whole generation of Australian cricket fans out there who are just our age right now who just don't remember when Australia were bad. Mm. You know, the, people talk about mm. the 80s, but that didn't, that, I don't no. really remember like the border years, yeah. not really a thing. I grew up in the era of Mark Taylor, mm. Ricky Ponting. Yeah. You know, Steve Waugh, uh, you know, even Michael Clark won a World Cup, you know. So, mm. by like, this, this era of, like, we need to win something yeah. is startling. It's scary. I'm frightened. I'm hiding under beds at night. Yeah. Um, I haven't answered my phone in days. That's a hacking issue. Yeah, um, it's a different thing. It's a different yeah. thing altogether. Well, well, let's get the actual news out of the way. Okay. So, Richardson's in. Curtis Patterson's been rushed into the side after making two undefeated hundreds right. in a Caxi game. Uh, and forced to add him, just through sheer weight of runs. Sheer weight of runs, and, and I applaud the selectors. I'll actually do it physically, yeah. so you can see that as a visual. I applaud the selectors for bringing mm. him into the side mm. based off runs and nothing else. Mm. Uh, but, like, I mean, let's make a contention here. If Australia manages to lose one of these matches, mm. 
uh, and therefore can't win the series. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a bigger crisis than we've seen so far? Like, are we stumbling from crisis to Mm -hmm. worse crisis Mm -hmm. every year, much like the global storm clouds Mm -hmm. hovering over the entire world economy? Yeah, Yeah, we don't know how bad things can get until they do. Mm. And and that's what my tattoo says. And I'm just kind of thinking, like, like if 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 a game is lost here, I don't know Let's how it, coffee. I don't know how it's going to ha- enjoy your coffee at four o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. I don't know how it's going to happen. <laughs> What's the day, Matt? <laughs> it's probably the best day to have coffee. That's actually it's a good point. Day. Tuesday's mm. a strange day of the week, yeah. isn't it? That's for another show for another time. Well, speaking of crises, okay. I mean this probably has, has gone unreported to some extent. You know, mm. there's been so much flux going on in Australian cricket, yes. but. We actually don't really have a vice captain. I mean, we've got a captain now in Tim Payne, mm. but Josh Hazelwood's gone now. He's got like those hot spots or whatever the thing yeah. is before you know it's an actual stress fracture. I don't know yeah. what the industry term is mm. or the medical term for it, should I say? Yeah. But is this a bl- this is almost a full blown constitutional crisis in its own? I mean, mm. there's a leadership vacuum. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is the is the vice captain position even meaningful anymore in cricket? Or I don't is it know. Duck. Ca- it's a lame. It's a lame duck. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. What's a vice captain doing except for you know if the captain fancies just hopping off the field having a shower? The whole, yeah. Ice bath, you know, they, they captain for three overs. But what if the, the unthinkable cup? happens? He goes, What mm. if Tim Payne, our savior and leader, mm. you know, goes down one too many times, oh, pulls up a little bit oh. sore, hammy maybe, has mm. to go off the field? Who steps up and becomes, you know, the I don't know, the 45th? Well, let's, let's say it's it's like the well, let's, this. Let's, yeah. let's say it. Let's say it on three who the captain should be. Okay, yeah. One, two, three, Brad Cummins. Mind. Okay. Uh, so we can now see what the confusion is in Australian mm, cricket. Yes. So let's actually... Who's being selected? Let, so, so what we're saying is, if I can kind of package this up, is okay, that like yeah. we think we're going to waltz to an easy win against a uh, Sri Lankan side, rather, that waltz. is not only um, below Australia in the test rankings, but yeah. its its country is actually struggling. It has issues beyond yes, yes, cricket yes. itself. Yes. Um, Unlike could, Australia. If, we're just on the precipice, though. I mean, if we go down, yeah. this, could, this could be really bad. This could be platinum bad. Could be the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone, Pez, but it's mm. not going to happen. Sri Lanka mm. are terrible. Where, like, well, I don't, I well Sri Lanka have their own problems, mm. yes. massive problems. I mean, one of their greatest players, Sanath Jaisiri, is involved in some kind of ICC <laughs> corruption charge. I mean, uh, really? they're, they're kind of going after him over this. He's refusing to hand over his phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be fair, I would never hand over my phone to anyone. <laughs> you know, I don't need anyone looking at my browser history or yeah. what's going on there. So yeah. I can understand why Jaisiri is refusing to comply. But, mm. you know, one of the greatest players in the history of Sri Lankan cricket, mm. under siege, as the country is, so, so what, we should beat them. What's he done? What's the corruption I don't know what charge? he's done, mate. I'm not a journalist. Okay. So One of those you, ones you read, the, head, you read the headline. I read the headline <laughs> and then I ended up on like a two-hour YouTube spree and I started... Uh, what did you, you watch? Yeah. yeah, what did I watch? FIFA tutorials. Yeah. FIFA tutorials, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of videos yeah. about Jordan Peterson and alt-right culture. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. He's in Brisbane at the moment. Means. Come yeah. on to the show, Jordan. Yeah, toxic masculinity. Yeah, of course. Edos, next... Yeah, so we might shift gears now from Jordan Peterson to um, the WBBL. And uh, there was That's not- a hell of a gear shift. Yeah, It's a big gear <laughs> shift. Uh, straight to second gear here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it really was an unbelievable semi-final finish yes. in the WBBL on the weekend. Um, and we've got a bit of footage because yeah, there so, were two so, isolated incidences that deserve mention. And, and just qu- quickly before we do, um, I think these were two, the two most thrilling moments of this summer. Genuinely, comfortably. like comfortably mm. the most thrilling moments. I let yeah. out an involuntary roar yeah. in the house yeah. upon seeing the first one, yeah. second one I was in Coles. Yeah. So I couldn't do that for social graces reasons. I think the only moment that rivals it was when um, Marcus Harris asked, you know, um, Pan if he wanted to go on a circuit afterwards. And I wanted yeah, to Pan's true. response. That, was, was, that was up there. I was roaring at the TV for different reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you doing, mate? Yeah. Come on. That's so can, can, we, yeah. can we just have a look? quickly at the first finish which was between the Heat and the Thunder it's Nicola Carey who held the bat for the Thunder who stood to win the game with five runs to win off the last mm. ball uh, she attempted a six it was going and look at that that's Jess Johnson coming in a bowl oh, absolutely it. hammers it Whoop. Unbelievable catch in the air. Unbelievable catch there. The lack There's of Heidi balance Burkett. when she's taking that catch from Heidi yeah. Burkett, just like just on the move. Look at her hands, hands, on, hands, on hands everywhere. Oh, it means it's so much. It's a universal term. I love society. it when just people get around you as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, we speak about like selections. You mm-hmm. need to you know, be able to get you know be able to get round someone. Mm-hmm. Just oh, always Heidi Burkett just got round there. People were around her in a semicircle motion, chanting her name. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's draw that out further. Well, what about um, Nicola Carey though? Like. Inches from absolute like Utopia. heroism. Utopia. Do you know what I mean? Well, like it was a binary. Six... It was either yeah, everything or nothing. Mm. We, we talk about Bevan hitting a four off a last ball. Yeah. That was six. Yes. That was that was inches from a six mm. to take them literally into the, the final. greatest moment you can achieve on a cricketing field. Hitting six off the last ball to win a game in a semi final. Like mm. they couldn't actually get any better than that. Utopia possible. Not to be Plucked. outdone though. No. You know, one of those like 
standard tweet saying, oh, that was a good finish. Well, then, the, you know, the Sixers and the Renegades said, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sixers v Renegades, we might have a look at the footage here as well. I mean, you've all seen it, but let's talk through it because so much is going on. Perry's into Molyneux there. Now, that's going. Yeah. That's four. That's carving away. Yeah. Look at the yard. From Aaron Burns. Up. What a stop. Unbelievable. From Aaron Burns. Mm. Sarah Ailey gets it in. Now, watch his turn. No view of the stumps. Bang. Hits middle. Line. Look at Perry's turn there. Mm. I've got to say, one of the best things about that footage, and you know that this is the case of any good sporting phenomena, when the actual ball hits the stumps, the camera shakes yeah. because of the actual like, guttural mm. roar of the crowd, and then probably the, the cameraman, cameraman or woman yeah. Yeah. just shaking the camera, yeah. going, that was unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah, moment of the summer for me. What's so your favourite moment about that final instance? I th for me, it's the, it's the four, saving the four. Yeah. Unbelievable. The air time. Yeah. The air time there. I lost my, just my... Oxygen for a moment. I was just <laughs> inhaling so many times from the just unbelievable things that were happening. For me, it was the the throw, mm. the blind throw by Healy, just turning around. I know where the stumps are. I'm a professional cricketer, and I'm mm. just nailing it. Mm. It was because the way the ball arced in toward mm. the stumps as well, with that great vision from Lovely our friends at Channel it. Seven. Mm. Uh, yeah. So so. Mm. Big thumbs up. And then that final WBBL final is this Saturday mm. Mm. between the Sixers and the Heat. Mm. Uh, how can you top those finishes? You probably can't. Oh, oh look. I need to televising it. Yeah, mm. I mean, good on Channel 7 for airing that game of cricket. Um, now, we move on to the BBL. We have to move on to the secondary competition of the men's Bing Bash League. We've already seen the greatest thing that's ever going to happen in the sport of cricket um, this summer, but we'll, we'll move on. Um, Shane Watson is criminally underrated many have said that in the past and we'll, and we'll future, continue to say and we'll continue to say that, mm. <laughs> say that. Mm. but he scored another hundred on the weekend um just pumped them all around the ground mm. i couldn't help but notice though that he just looks like i've never seen shane watson tired no one's ever seen shane watson yeah. tired in the same way that no one's ever seen bruce wayne and batman in the same room True. so just just a bit of footage come up here he just punches the ball to the leg side here's shane watson to chalk up his 100th cricket yeah. run in this match mm. and he completes the single easy yeah. as he likes Very selfish single casual. and he takes off the lid and he have you ever seen him he just he yeah. stepped out of the shower yeah. there he's, he's fresh as anything Not a hair out of place there yeah. and isn't ever time. it's like the great gatsby unbelievable just skin looking pristine yeah. in the gabba light that was working mm. at that time a little hey. sweat film over the I face i love shane watson so much and i'm happy to say that I really am happy to say it, yeah. Um, people have been calling him for being to the test side. I say getting him into government, in my opinion. Anyway. Next level. Next, Next level. level. So then from there, there was an incident. I don't know if you caught this, lads, but uh, the, the, the lights went out at the Gabba. That's right. Um, we've got some footage here rolling right. up of, uh, of, of lights not working. Mm. Uh, just zoom in further <laughs> yeah, and further. That's, that's what it looks like when the lights aren't on. That's what happens when the lights aren't on, mm. uh, much like three people here behind this desk. Mm. Um, so... <laughs> Um, what happened then was a, a, a rather bizarre instance where the scoreboard's out, people were complaining mm. about people mm. trying to get match tickets yeah. for, the, for the test match now. Yeah. They get, the CA have solved the... Because they the abandoned the game. There. They abandoned yeah. the game. They've been yeah. the game. So Just the Thunder, the thunder mm. was so far in front of that game because mm. the Heat did lose a couple mm. of wickets. Yeah. Um, shockingly, that's the first time that's happened in this competition this yeah. year. Um, uh, Bash Brothers, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marketable. Very marketable. <laughs> Very Don't marketable. Even need mm. So then... Um, there's a lot of conjecture about, well, the, the Thunder should have been given the points. Um, a lot of people are saying that, mm. uh, least of all some people on Twitter. And there was an interesting tweet exchange by the people involved in that fixture and Moses on yes. So mm. the first exchange happens here. It's kind of on screen there. So let, let, let's read them out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just read them out. Uh, Brendan McCumber said, this is ridiculous. So the Thunder are supposed to get the points uh, away from some sort of ground standards. Where was the responsibility to prove a roof at Spot the Stadium when it pissed with rain a week ago? <sighs> Can we say that? Are you sure? that they were winning that game. It's an yeah. there's, a, there's a hint of a beef going on here, yeah. and, and it continued, obviously. Yeah. Well, because um, McCollum said, you know, I'm a racing man, and everyone knows that, you know, although we were two for 10, we might have gone on to win the game. And, you know, yeah, as a yeah. racing man, yeah. you never sort of get giddy after 200 yeah. metres of a race. Here's the racing metaphor. Yes. Well, well, if it was a racing metaphor, there was about 15 metres left that race, <laughs> yeah. and the Thunder were a 16 <laughs> lengths in front. Moses on Reeks, though, lads, yes. and friend of the great cricketer, we yeah, should point out. Yes. Um, he, he stepped in here and piped in. He wasn't even involved in the game, but thought he'd pipe in. Mm -hmm. A priest has been been set when CA gave Victoria points in a game that never got going due to an apparent poor outfield claiming that it's the home team's responsibility mm. to provide a playable surface mm. fixture irrelevant to who may or may not win the game. He's using laws there. Yeah. He's using his very laws and very good grammar yeah. as well. He's, he's, An understanding yeah. of law. He cited yeah. his references there. Yeah. Uh, it's not in his tweet. But mm. he really good use of Harvard the, reference the slash. Uh, Brendan McCullum states back there that state government run the power. Now we're getting into some government oh, issues. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is good is, TV. Yeah. I mean, you can read this in there. You know, if it rains mm. in two days and we don't have a roof for the SCG, do we get the points? You know, this mm. is, And this 
this is all happening uh, the day of the mm. Sixers and the Heat game at the SCG, so it's getting a little bit spicy. It keeps, it keeps yeah. coming back to weather events, yeah. which, are, which is different to power events. Like Weather mm. events are genuinely uncontrollable. Mm. I know you know, the Sydney Sixers mm. and the SCG Trust do control a lot yes. of things around that area, but not so much the weather. The weather so I, I do yeah. think his analogy is mm. slightly off. And I think Moses is insurance winning. company. Yeah. So Moses said, you know, for the gathering. And then, you know, and then Chris Lynn gets involved to wrap it all up. Yeah. And he says, have a sleep in Moses, spelling his name incorrectly, using mm. the sleeping. Uh, also, his uh, Twitter handle there, that image yeah. is quite something. Mm. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's the that's the big that. takeaway of the BBL Jeez. so far. I'm not sure what Moses' sleeping habits have to do with anything. Is that like, does Moses mm. Well, cricketers do get or? to sleep in. I mean, yeah. sleeping is, is part of the high performance yeah. regime. Yeah. Mm. Get up, they often monitor the sleeping patterns that yeah. you have just mm. to regulate the body and so forth. So that's what the cricketers are doing on a Wednesday mm. uh, on the internet. So we had a little bit more fire, I suppose, some actual fire, some on field fire going on when yeah. there was the Mel We're down here in Melbourne at the moment, and there was the local. Derby, the rivalry between the Renegades and the much more fancied stars, true mm. to their name. And uh, obviously, most people will be aware that Marcus Thorne is the greatest alpha in Australian cricket at the moment, both uh, in terms of the way he carries himself and his actual physicality. Yeah. But it would appear, um, you know, after Thorne takes his wickets, he likes to kind of flex like the Hulk. Kane Richardson took a wicket and decided to um, flex back at Stoinis, who was quite perplexed by the whole issue. I think mm. we've got some footage here. So he's gone there, it was a back, and he goes straight at Stoinis. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Well, I think he's laughing. No, so he um, looks like yeah. he's laughing. He's yeah. a bit confused by it all. Yeah, he just gives it straight to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he says yeah. that's absolutely losing yeah. his mind, which I guess is a good comeback there. Yeah, shows um, some awareness, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Do we like that? Like, I mean, uh, spaghetti arms from Kane Richardson, self-admitted that he has spaghetti <laughs> arms. So you right. Do you like the like, irony of him doing that? Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like I like sledging the the non-striking batsman. Mm. That's yeah. I don't know what's mm. going on there, but mm. I just appreciated that. Um, but just a, another one that I picked up here was mm. in the uh, it was in the Scorchers and Hurricanes game. George mm. Bailey anchored his side to a, a famous victory there at Optus Stadium. He hit an absolute monster six down the ground. It was just fantastic crowd catch taken, only to be ruined from hero to zero in a moment's time. There was George Bailey just pumping no, the ball no, down the ground. Great play, George And Bailey. it's just plucked to one of the greatest catch. catches of all time. So he's he's not a boy drop spin. Moment of his life. Throws it back then, well. And then he just ruins it by, dab oh, by dabbing. Oh, no. You've, yeah, done, dabbing. you've come this far, mate. And I mean, you're dabbing. It's honestly one of the best crowd catches you'll see. Yeah. He just gets it well, right in the way, fingers. Goes, yeah, right in not the a drop spilled of the yeah. beer. He can't believe his lucky stars here. Out with the lads on a Tuesday. He's having two fingers. He knows the camera's on him. Look at him. He's wearing his orange shirt. He's brilliant. And then you go, oh, what do I do now? What do I do Brother, now? That's me. What do uh, I do? Uh Oh, right, oh, my, my twelve-year-old kid's gonna love this. <laughs> and, and, and the issue is, like, uh, as, as with like men over the age of thirty wearing white shoes or something like that, like he's mm. just too old to dab. <laughs> he's just too, too old. Too old. Yeah. Well, he's not Paul Pogba. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. done. Um, okay, well, last one here uh, from me, just from this, uh, another uh, BBL takeaway. This is all just <laughs> all about the BBL takeaways yeah. from us. Mm. There was a run-out situation which I thought brought an interesting uh, element to the game. Now, uh, take a single hit at Jake Weatherall. The stumps uh, attempted the throw down, misses, hits the bat, and it goes towards the boundary mm. where George Bailey has to trot after it. Yeah. And he does rein it in just before the rope. But, you know, this it's, it's one of those things in cricket where, like, it's uh, gentleman's etiquette not yeah. to run if the ball mm. strikes you when there's a mm. run-out attempt on. But let me put it to you, lads. Mm. Yeah. If, there's, if there's one run to win yeah. in that same scenario, ball thrown at the stumps, hits the bat, how fast are you running to, to complete the yeah, single? How fast? Yeah. How yeah, fast are you running? How fast? Yeah, how fast? Look, it just gently just kisses the blade here of Jake yeah. Weatherall. Yeah, yeah. Just, just nicks it. Yeah. And he's not looking at the, the thrower either. Yeah. So I think he's well within his rights to run as many runs as That's, he can. It's mm. close because it's such a bad yeah. throw. He's almost behind the stumps. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. Would you yeah. cheat? Would you cheat in that I like the way when George Bailey ran after it, he did so as though surely there's no runs yeah. happening here. He's <laughs> like, oh, I'm just jogging. And then when I get to the ball, I'm just going to stand there and look at it yeah. and just swipe it up. Oh, yeah, great. No, no one's running. Very good. That was very, that was good game. Have we, uh, have we got one more video here yeah. uh, that we might throw yeah, to? This is a bit of a strange one. It mm. came to us on Twitter. Mm. Um, it kind of speaks for itself. This bloke's just got an absolutely terrible ball outside yeah. of the off stump, but yeah. it's the umpire yeah. who really steps into mm. things mm. And, uh, and and takes centre stage. And yes. Calling wide there and, mm. and a bit of flamboyance yeah. as well, you know, calling to the other spectators on the other side of the field yes. and to that side as well. Yeah. There are scorers all around the ground there, so they just want to make sure that Just got to make sure that they get that. That looks like a high standard of cricket, so we do appreciate when fans mm. send, uh, send uh, videos. Couldn't get that 4K, unfortunately. Right, guys, mm. We couldn't get it in 4K. That mm. was filmed with a potato. Thank you for mm. your comments underneath. Lads, uh, into the second segment of the episode today. Right. And uh, an important segment. Very yeah. important. I mean, there was a bit going around on social this week. It was a bit of a meme about positive, controversial views across many things, including film and sport and cricket. Yes. Of course. So we kind of spun off that with our second segment that we're calling 
bland beige cricketing views that would genuinely suck the life out of the room at a dinner party or soiree of eight to ten people, all couples. Um, so we've all been at a dinner party, yes. you know, couples party, um, eight to ten people, and we've got opinions. Mm. We hope not to suck the life out of dinner party rooms, mm. but mm. these these might. So I think, Pez, mm. you're going to kick it off with um, your own beige bland cricketing view. Yeah. My first beige bland cricketing view that would genuinely suck the life out of a room at dinner party or couples, eight to ten people, mm. uh, for six to eight, is, is that the Duckworth Lewis method or system after Professor Stern became involved once Duckworth and Lewis retired is an elegant algorithm for approximating run chases. Yes, that's right. All of you people who complain about Duckworth Lewis whenever there's a rain delay and then we need to create a projected score, yeah. need to just check again because it is a very el elegant algorithm. There's actually a mathematical formula. Duckworth Lewis system is team two's par score equals team one's par score multiplied by team two's resources divided by team one's resources. So when you sort of see that right. they've got to chase 180, there's only 12 overs and they've got to get 140 if you stay with me and I'm not sucking the life out of the room. Mm. <laughs> Take into account that everyone's still got 10 wickets. And I just love... I mean, I'm getting into it now. This is a real passion yeah, of mine. But every, yeah, I apologise. It's no, good TV. Should, but... Um, I just, I just think that's, I think it's a fantastic algorithm, and it needs. To, people need to stop hating on it. It's I a, think it's so. a wonderful mathematical formula by Duckworth Lewis and Stern. What people don't know is that actually the movie Good Will Hunting was based on the formulation of the Duckworth Lewis method. <laughs> it's a little known. Uh, little, very little known, mm. but yep. hopefully more well known now. Yep. Uh, the second one, lads, uh, one of mine is uh, sledging is actually really effective in winning games of cricket, mm. and I know. It, it's uh, something that we don't like to talk about mm. publicly too much, but mm. it's actually uh, really important to do so. Um, mm. And you can win games of cricket in doing so. Yeah. Like if you compared sledging somebody and being outright hostile and unfriendly to them versus yeah. being really friendly to them, I think they're going to perform better if you're nicer to them. I think so. Mm. I'm not saying do it. No, but it is, it's just more effective. Yeah. You, can, you can really unsettle your opponent mm. and therefore potentially mm. get him out. It's but morally heinous. Repugnant. Yeah. Repugnant. <laughs> heinous, heinous crimes. Mm. Speaking of heinous crimes, one of mine uh, is uh, batting left-handed. And I've always said this is tantamount to cheating. Now, mm. <gasps> I, Sorry, the, the life was that, just sucked out. Yes, and all of the air as well. Mm. Now, if you look at the uh, over, overall records of the leading run scorers in Test cricket history, uh, you're looking at Alistair Cook, Kumar mm. Sangakkara, Graham Smith, Alan Border, Brian Lara, Chanda, Paul Hayden. Mm. Now, there's all these left-handers that are in like the top 15 run scorers of all time. They're all left-handed. How many left-handers have actually ever played Test cricket? It's probably less than 40%. The mathematics don't make any sense. Mm. Therefore, batting left-handed is cheating. Everyone bowls in your legs. You can't be at LBW right. pretty much. Mm. And also, what's the one tactic that you that you have mm. as a left as, as a left-handed batsman? Mm. What's the one tactic you hate when, when right-hand bowlers come around the wicket and bowl at well, you? That's what it's like facing every ball for a right-hander. Mm. Well, he goes. I mean, Dave Warner was right-handed, but then he changed to being a left-hander. We all know mm. what they say about Dave Warner. I was involved mm. in a bit of an incident you might have heard of mm. uh, early last year. So mm. yeah, just mm. put saying. two and two together. Put two and two up when we're talking maths. It was about two hundred years ago. They used to actually like you know um, cane people for being left-handed as well. So you're like it's a sin. So, so two hundred years ago, they had it right, is what you're yeah. saying. Yes, yeah. go back to yeah. two hundred years ago. Things mm. were better back then. Mm. Okay, the next. Um, beige bland view that I have uh, that'll suck the life out of dinner parties is uh, that <laughs> Shane Watson was a criminally underrated all-rounder in the annals I of Australian this. cricket so once again social media if you're out there saying oh Shane Watson you've got to review that or, <laughs> or Pez you've got to review that idea <laughs> um, please stop doing that you're revealing yourself as someone who doesn't know anything about cricket he averages more with the bat than he does with the ball he was an extremely skillful bowler and I think the only problem people have with Shane Watson in terms of his performance is that he sort of didn't achieve what people thought that he could but he was too busy um, dealing with Michael Clark. he was too busy scoring lots of 50s he was too busy helping as the fifth bowler he was too busy fielding at first yep. slip he was too busy standing in his captain when he needed to he literally was the entire package mm. he was he was the flint off well, uh, he, that we want he would easily make Australia's uh, best T20 side of all time uh, mm. it's only a short history but he'd also definitely make uh, in my all-time ODI side for Australia, he'd be yeah. opening the batting. I think he's one of the greatest players Australia he, ever produced. He did everything that we wanted him to do, like as an Australian cricket product. But he I came from the yeah. academy. He, he was the ball machine guy. Great rig. Everything. What, like, what didn't he do? Well, he did a lot, but you know, he just looked so good that we expected so much from him. He yeah. was like yeah. a prototype. It's mm. almost like, you know, if he was created in a laboratory, it, we yeah. would have been really happy with that yeah. result. Shane yeah. Watson looked fantastic. His yeah. results were good, but were they flint off 05 good? Yeah. Exactly. Don't know. That's rhetorical, isn't it? That's rhetorical. <laughs> um, really good TV doing rhetorical <laughs> questions. Uh, another one from uh, my side, lads. Mm. Ball tampering should be decriminalised immediately. Completely it's just agree. so much fun mm. yeah. watching the ball hoop around yeah. and, you know, 
that little thing that happened early last year really threw Australian cricket into crisis. Mm. But if it was legal, mm. we wouldn't be having these kind of conversations. We'd mm. just be entertaining cricket and batting's, not all for it. Batting's mm. too easy at those in this, in this level of the game. This mm. level being this conversation happening right here mm. on the internet right mm. now. I just think that you should be allowed, like the ball should swing in all countries, not just England. It's the only mm. place that swings. Um, yeah. there's, like, it's too easy to score hundreds and don't mean mm. anything anymore. Like look at the MCG, look at the SCG. Just mm. look at them. Just like, Don't do anything about them, just look no, at them. No, just look. Yeah. And as with other recreational activities that won't be mentioned, everyone's doing it anyway yeah i know yeah do you know what i mean so let's yeah. just, I mean, why don't we just point. why don't we just regulate it mm. so just allow for a fraction mm. of ball tampering yeah you know, as, as it goes on it's just kind of sanctioned by mcc law I like it as well performance enhancing drugs as well i want to see a man run a six second hundred in the olympics mm. and mm. i want to see mitchell stark <laughs> pitch a ball outside leg stump and then hitting mm. off on a regular basis last one to wrap it up lads Bats are too big these days, and this is something you've probably never mm. heard before, certainly yeah. in the, certainly yeah. the mainstream oh, that's media. that's bland. No, so, <laughs> the mainstream <laughs> media. But bats actually are too big now. Yeah. Imagine if Bradman was using Dave Warner's bat now. Um, he would have averaged 615. Oh. That's, that's, not, that's not an opinion, that's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's playing on uncovered wickets, he was batting in a business shirt. Sure, he was facing guys who were also bowling in business shirts on uncovered wickets, but that's mm. not the point. Mm. If, he had, if he had the Kaboom, you know, or, you know, another name brand bat, mm. you know, Bradman would have done it so easily. Alan Border, the same thing. Just like, mm. you see guys, like, miss timing 100 mm. metre sixes now. Mm. It's ridiculous. They're too mm. big, and everyone mm. should be batting with a stump. Well, that's, that's a wonderful way to wrap that segment up. He mm. goes, a lot of... Uh, bland beige views raised but I think mm. a lot of good ones yeah. so let's move on to your questions where you generate the content that most people tend to like more than what we say so um, yep. ask TGC the first question I believe is from Steve Stevens it is uh, he asks at grade cricketer is a hundred in an abandoned match so we're talking about Shane Watson with the mm. thunder again the greatest cricketing achievement ever so for context mm. uh, obviously we talk about scoring a hundred in a losing mm. side as being the greatest thing you can do because we you can go back that. into the dressing room with smug satisfaction that you did your job in this individual game and nobody else right. did that's better than winning a game where everyone gets to share some mm. some of the spoils anyway but a hundred in an abandoned match no. does that defeat no. Yeah, okay, no. No, it doesn't. Because like you have to lose. Like it's a smug satisfaction that you get when you walk into the dressing rooms having done your bit for the team that you can walk in there and say, Well, where the rest where, where were the rest of you ten idiots out That's there? That's true. Mm. I think there is a one positive thing in that you just bat and then you get to leave because I mean yes. in Watson's case, he batted, <laughs> yes. he got a hundred, it was yeah. fantastic yeah. for him. Then the game yeah. was over and he yeah. got to go home. He doesn't early. have to field. That's a very good point. Because yeah, the question is if home. it's the greatest achievement. Okay. Yeah, it's not nothing. Right. Yeah. Okay. I have to lose and lose my innings. Mm. All right. Let's go to the second one here. Um, today's uh, second entry mm -hmm. on Ask TGC is from Evan Brown Smith and he mm. says or she says, Is Curtis Patterson's Elevation to the test team following 157 not out in grade cricket and then twin tons against Sri Lanka. Proof that we are all just three tons away from test selection. He makes a good point, but does yeah. it add up? Mm. How does this stack no. up mathematically? Well, we all implies that we're on the verge of Caxi 11 selection mm. and also yeah. playing first grade. Yeah. Um, mm. That's that's not the case in any way. Oh, we, did this, we did this a while ago now. Um, you know, number one podcast maths, yeah. mm. um, is that if you're playing fourth grade, you're probably about 14 double tons away from a, yeah. any, a test match at any time. But you mm. have to hit them consecutively. Mm. Mm. You know, any, any missed opportunities. Brad Hodge said to us, you know, that uh, he scored a double ton. Yeah. Three another double one. tons in a row. Yeah. Not <laughs> no, that wasn't enough. Not enough. Mm. So, Evan, um, I don't think that's right. I think you need a lot more than three tons from being. Mm. Maybe in this, mm. in this, in this format. Uh, what Evan's done there is seen that Curtis Patterson, to his credit, has scored three undefeated hundreds. Mm. Seen that one of them's from first grade and said, well, that's obviously just that classic mm. leap he's, he's forgotten fifth that, grade and yeah. he plays yeah the, the word grade there kind of got mm. jumbled up in his brain and mm. cross wide yeah. and now he thinks he's three times away yeah. from well he's like daring to dream Evan. Evan he's mm. daring to dream there Evan, isn't and he? thank you for the question he wants mm. validation that what he's doing on the weekend this isn't mm. a waste of time mm. Mm. And i'm sorry Evan. that's not what we're here for yeah because you are chris bayer writes in and he says that great cricketer is uh Kerry keeping in his australian odi gloves uh, in the BBL equivalent to rocking up to training with your state lid. Now, there also might be a photo attached here of what mm. Chris is actually talking about. There right, he is. With the, he's wearing these Australian green and gold gloves there in mm, his striker's okay. kit. Um, is this the equivalent of rocking up to training with your state lid? I think, yes, it is. Yeah. Well, it's not training. It's, it's a televised professional fixture. So yeah. it's even a step further. It is. Uh, and, I'll, and I'd like to see more of that, actually. I'd like to mm. see players. And the BBL is a great promotion for cricket generally. And it's about... The BBL is a gateway for kids and those who aren't that familiar with cricket to understand what it's about and to possibly expose them to the yes. greater gateway drug of test cricket. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> if you need to understand anything about yeah. cricket, it's that yeah, every, at every opportunity, you've got to demonstrate to your peers mm. if you've played in a representative team higher than where you're currently at. So Alex Carey doing that in the BBL is actually kind of helping kids understand the way cricket actually works. I'd like to see mm. more 
international BBL players just actually be able to wear an item of international kit. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it is yeah, I like that he's fronting to players that probably, presumably know he's mm. already played international cricket. Yeah. But, you know, here it is. Here are my gloves. Look at mm. me. Look at me. Boys, thank you so much for joining me uh, this week hey, as welcome. ever. It's uh, nice to be on your show. Here, Happy New Year. And uh, please, uh, uh, viewers out there, just uh, maybe write into us about your bland beige cricketing views that would mm. generally suck the life out of the room of a dinner party or soiree of 8 to 10 people, all couples. We'll see you next week on The Great Cricket on 7.